mitral valve prolapse is the topic and uh, mitral valve prolapse or abbreviated MVP and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw uh, two of the um, um, chambers of the heart and those are the left atrium and the left ventricle and the connection in between them involves a valve and it's called a mitral valve right here I'll draw the name on the side here just to save space and the mitral valve is a bicuspid valve and there's two flaps as I drew now mitral valve prolapse and what does prolapse mean well I'll draw it in blue I won't erase the existing one prolapse essentially is kind of like this I'm drawing it in a very exaggerated way to kind of illustrate and what that does is by itself it doesn't seem like a big deal but the problem is that with time if this is serious enough it can allow mitral regurgitation and what that means is that the blood that normally is supposed to go from left atrium to left ventricle some of it can come back and that is known as mitral regurgitation and the mitral regurgitation can lead to a lot of problems um, I wanted to kind of explain why this happens also in this diagram without getting this too confusing in the left ventricle you've got a muscle basically I'll just erase the LV and that muscle is known as papillary muscles and the most important thing is to understand this rather than the beauty of the diagram and the um, mitral valve of course two flaps right there they open and close to allow blood flowing from left atrium to left ventricle well what's interesting is you have these little tendons that connect the muscle to the valve um, what color should I use? any color it doesn't really matter I'll use purple and you have these tendons that connect the valve to the papillary muscle and those tendons have a special name and they're called chordae tendinae and what happens is sometimes these tendons can rupture tendinae uh, when they rupture so let's say one of them ruptures if that happens then this valve no longer looks like that anymore the, f the valve flap will kind of look like this now do you see what's happened the tendons that are allowed that are supposed to be there to make it close properly one of them or two of them have ruptured and that's what causes this mitral regurgitation this essentially is a mitral valve prolapse MVP and then that can lead to mitral regurgitation which is essentially blood going back because the flaps haven't closed properly I think if you draw it like that it kinda makes a little bit more sense because there's an opening where they shouldn't be so I, I hope that illustrates what mitral valve prolapse and mitral regurgitation are kind of uh, referring to so why does this happen etiology um, well the biggest reason of course is the one that I just mentioned which is rupture of the chordae tendinae the chorda uh, tendinae are basically the tendons that connect the muscles to the mitral valve it's how commonly occurs in certain medical conditions and they test this on the licensing exams what they'll do is they'll present somebody who has Marfan syndrome or who has um, APKD adult polycystic kidney disease and then they'll go on and talk about some heart condition and they'll say what heart condition do you think this patient has and the answer will be mitral valve prolapse it's sort of sort of connected and another reason why it's so important is because if you have mitral valve prolapse it can lead to some pretty significant consequences and those consequences are also very commonly tested the first is heart failure the next one is a very big one that they test endocarditis this can be a disastrous consequence of mitral valve prolapse another thing that they commonly talk about on licensing exams is the risk of developing a thromboembolism because of the pooling of the blood in the chambers instead of properly being uh, pumped out because of this mitral regurgitation 
So now let's get into some of the symptoms. And Well, interestingly, a lot of times people live with this with no symptoms, asymptomatic. But if the person, person does have symptoms, then some of them will be as follows. The patient can present with chest pain, uh, palpitations, that's a very common one. Um, they can also present with migraines, which is an interesting uh, symptom, feelings of anxiety. Those are some of the symptoms. Now, one thing I really wanted to mention was the cardiac exam, which is the heart sound that's actually related to mitral valve prolapse. It's known basically as a click with a systolic murmur. It's called a late systolic murmur. And um, this um, is very, very commonly written in clinical vignettes. And I wanted to play one for you to, s to let you see what it sounds like. So you probably won't have to listen to uh, a murmur on the licensing exam, but you definitely will have to listen to a murmur in real life when you um, see patients. And um, this, uh, definitely remember this, this is a very key finding on a physical exam when you see uh, a patient and also on the clinical vignette. Diagnosis, without a doubt, echocardiogram. That's the way to diagnose a mitral valve prolapse. Treatment, well, the treatment of mitral valve prolapse, if it's asymptomatic, is nothing. But if there's symptoms involved, then you use beta blockers. And the beta blockers, what they do essentially is help with the palpitations and the dizziness. Um, they can also help calm a person down who's having anxiety. So... Let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. 15-year-old girl presents to a pediatric cardiology clinic, complaint of chest pain. She states that the pain has come and gone over the past year, but has increased in frequency over the past few weeks. She describes it as a sharp pain over the, her left chest. Physical exam reveals a healthy appearing 15-year-old girl. Temperature is 99, pulse is 90, respiration is 20. Lung exam normal. Cardiac exam reveals a late systolic murmur preceded by a click at the apex. No heave or rub is present. An electrocardiogram and chest x-ray are unremarkable, which of the following is most like a diagnosis. Um, a click at the apex, or an apical click, whichever way you want to refer to it, followed by a late systolic murmur, is classic for mitral valve prolapse and combined with a chest pain in a 15 year old girl uh, during a cardiology uh, visit is actually a very characteristic scenario so it's a D and then the last one 45 year old man presents to uh, for a routine physical exam as part of an insurance medical assessment he is asymptomatic, has no family history of cardiac disease or sudden cardiac death. On exam, he is of slim, slim build. Blood pressure is 115 over 65, heart rate 60 in, in regular. Cardiac exam, apex beat is of normal character and non-displaced. On auscultation, he has a mid-systolic click followed by a late systolic high-pitched murmur. On standing and with Vesalva maneuver, the click and murmur occur earlier in systole and the murmur is of increased intensity. On squatting, the click and the murmur occur later in systole, and the murmur is softer in intensity. There's no clinical signs of heart failure. You advise him that if he were to develop symptoms, the best drug treatment for this cardiac condition would be. Well, uh, the patient most likely has asymptomatic mitral valve prolapse, so asymptomatic MVP. But if he does develop symptoms, the most likely treatment medically would be beta blockers. And the beta blocker would be used to treat symptoms such as uh, palpitations or migraines or dizziness. And of these, the beta blocker is propranolol.